It's about time I talk about Little Big Planet 3, a game that was seen as a big low point of the entire series by a lot of people, including me. Why is this game seen as a disgrace to the Little Big Planet series and its community? Did it not live up to past LBP games content wise? Was the game just not fun? Well, I'll get into that soon enough. I'll give my honest opinion about the game itself, why the community as a whole dislikes it, and my experience with it. But first, what happened after LBP2 came out? What happened before LBP3 was even announced? I've already talked about Little Big Planet 2 in a previous video, so I'll try to keep this part short. LBP2 was my favorite game in the series. I didn't have a PS3 back when it launched in early 2011, but it was a game I would pick up around a year later. I spent about 2-3 to three years of my life just playing the game after school for 3-4 to four hours almost every single day. I've played a lot of what the community had to offer, both good and bad, fooled around in the create mode with friends, and even met a lot of cool people. But every now and then, LBP2 would get a huge level pack, usually based off of popular IPs like Toy Story or even the Muppets. All of these DLC level packs came with new materials, music, objects, and stickers, giving players even more stuff to work with to create some neat levels. Some level packs even included major tools and gadgets that expanded the gameplay options already available. These tools included things such as a superhero cape from the DC level pack, the attracto gel from the Muppets level pack, and even some crazy gimmicks that required other PlayStation products like the move controller functionality and even the PS Vita crossplay function. Overall, LBP2 had so much content added to it over time, even on top of all the new tools that were introduced in the base game. Even outside of LBP2, you had Little Big Planet Karting coming out in 2012, along with LBP Vita, which honestly were both really underrated games in my opinion. After another year, things started to get stale in the LBP community, as copied levels have reached its peak. Great levels were being overshadowed by the same old Mortal Kombat and Shark survivals to the point where it was really hard to find those really creative levels. And eventually, the game just got boring for a lot of people. Nothing really crazy happened to Little Big Planet 2 anymore as far as DLC goes, other than a few costume packs and maybe one more big level pack. It was at the point where people were hoping for a brand new Little Big Planet game. And on August 20th, 2013, we got the announcement of a free-to-play LBP game. And what do we call this magical world of wonderment? We call it the Little Big Planet Hub. Perfect. Yeah, a game called Little Big Planet Hub. There was a CGI trailer for it, with the narrator telling us that the game will have new tools, challenges to play against your friends, and even costumes you could buy. It was also announced that it would be free to play on PS3 eventually. Awesome, sounds really cool. Except that it never came out. So we had to wait a whole another year to find out more about our next Little Big Planet game. Little Big Planet 3. On June 10th, 2014, I woke up at around 2am because of a familiar LBP sound that came from my iPod 4 at the time. It was a notification on a Little Big Planet app I had ironically named LBP Hub. The same exact name as the cancelled free-to-play game. But the notification was for something I did not expect. Something I didn't think was actually happening anytime soon. An announcement for Little Big Planet 3 for both PS4 and PS3. It was finally time for a new game in the series, and the trailer for this new game was really promising. It showed off so many new additions that I didn't even know I wanted, like the brand new characters for example. There was Ansok, a dog looking character that could wall jump. A character named Swoop who could fly, pick up things while flying, and could glide. And then you had this big looking dude named Toggle, who was able to change between a big and small size with the press of a button. Along with these new characters was the main villain of the game, Newton, who honestly had a pretty cool design as well. But a very surprising addition that was shown off, and an addition that was pretty big, was the expansion from 3 playable layers to 16 playable layers. Anyways, this game looked promising. I was hyped and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it that November. It just looked like a better Little Big Planet 2 for the next generation console, and nothing bad could possibly come out of it. Well, the game launched on November 18th, 2014, and everything bad that could possibly happen, happened. The game was a broken and buggy mess. People's profiles were being corrupted, and they had to delete their save files. Menu navigating was an awful and slow experience, people weren't able to join online sessions, and overall, most of the community was really upset and just accepted that Little Big Planet 3 was a garbage game and moved on. 
Maybe go back to LBB2, wait for the bugs to iron out, or just move on completely and leave the series altogether. And sadly, the latter option is what a lot of people took. People were really, really upset. Not to mention the PS3 version locked out a ton of people from playing with their PS4 friends because they weren't able to play with each other. Yes, the PS3 and PS4 versions were pretty much the same, but you weren't able to play with your friends if you were on different consoles. So not only was the community divided between two different versions of the same broken game, but there were also people still playing Little Big Planet 2. Whether it was because they got sick of Little Big Planet 3 in the first couple of weeks, or the fact that a lot of their friends just play LBP2 and not LBP3. I know many of my friends I met on LBP2 left the series and never came back. Actually, I'm pretty sure all of my friends at this point don't play Little Big Planet anymore. I myself don't play the games anymore, and let me tell you, I was the one person that wanted to give LBP3 a chance. I got the PS3 version when it launched, and after experiencing game-breaking bugs, I told myself that the PS3 version was the bad version. A month later, I got a PS4 and LBP3 for Christmas. I launched the game, beat the first world of story mode, and game-breaking glitch. I was locked in the first world and couldn't progress at all. I had to delete my save file, and still to this day, I haven't even touched story mode again. Yes, I did beat it on the PS3 version, so I don't really care, but still, I wanted to beat it on PS4 as well. Playing Little Big Planet online with friends is the reason I love the series. Why don't I just do that instead? Well, like I said, most of my friends stopped playing as soon as LBP3 came out, so that option's off the table. I then tried to dive in and join some random people. And let me tell you, I really tried, but I would constantly get disconnected as soon as I enter a person's pod, constantly getting the error message, the game has diverged. There was no way to fix it, and since Little Big Planet was always fun to play with other people, I quickly got bored, playing the game by myself. I stopped playing, hoping that in the future these bugs would be patched out and the game would be better. Two whole years later, one of my friends got a PS4 and LBP3, I go back to the game to play some good old Little Big Planet until I realized we still couldn't join each other. It was still happening. Two whole years after launch, the game has not been fixed. What a shame. LBP3, one of my most anticipated games, at least for a little bit, was completely ruined because of a buggy and bad experience. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if those bugs were fixed since 2016, but I don't care. I'm not giving that game another chance. It has been far too long for me to care anymore. It should have been fixed the first week it came out, and the game itself should have had more time to be worked on. So what the hell happened? Well, Sumo Digital, a company that made games such as Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, Dead Island, and Crackdown 3, were tasked to handle Little Big Planet 3. The original creators of the series, Media Molecule, had nothing to do with this game at all, and it was put into the hands of people that had nothing to do with the LBP series, other than some PlayStation Vita crossplay DLC. And because Sony wanted this game to release by holiday season that year, it didn't give Sumo Digital a lot of time to figure out just what they were even doing, and they had no choice but to focus on the deadline. LBP3 was rushed to store shelves that November, bugs and all, just so all the little kitties could have it for Christmas. Having deadlines like that and having a completely different studio handle a sequel to a series they didn't work on before can cause serious development issues. Look at Metroid Prime 4 for the Nintendo Switch. It was literally just announced that the development of that game will be completely scrapped and will start from scratch because it didn't meet a certain level of quality that Nintendo wanted to see. It was being worked on by a completely different studio. A studio that wasn't familiar with the Metroid Prime series. Nintendo probably saw that the game had issues. It didn't play right, maybe the story wasn't going in the right direction, and they gave the game back to Retro Studios, the original creators of the Metroid Prime games. That is something Sony should have done. If they wanted to make an LBP3, make sure the original creators had some say in it. Yes, I know Media Molecule is working on Dreams. They've been doing so for years, but I have a feeling that they would have put their new project on the side, just for a little bit, to make sure Little Big Planet 3 was as good as it could be. Who knows though? I could be wrong. Maybe Sony didn't ask them to work on it, and they just said no. It's possible. But Little Big Planet 3 sounds pretty bad from what I'm saying. I gotta admit, I'm disappointed with the bad experience this game gave me. I'm upset that the game drove most of the community away, but aside from all of that, the game was pretty alright. I know, I was literally just bashing this game seconds ago, but LBP3 could have been great. I personally bought it on launch and experienced the worst of it. 
but I can't ignore the fact that it added a lot to expand level creation, and there are so many game-changing ideas introduced in LBP3 worth talking about. While everyone else was making the same big game, we were crafting something uniquely small. Small is imaginative. Small is heroic. Small is extraordinary. Get ready for an adventure so big. It had to be little. Little Big Planet 3. Stand small. The game itself, if not broken at launch, could have been my favorite LBP game. Yes, even better than Little Big Planet 2. I know people have their opinions on the new characters. They could have been worked into power-ups, or they could have had more to them, but I don't know. Their design's alright. And it's really cool to see new characters in the LVP game besides Sackboy. But forget about the characters for a second, because a lot of the new tools added into this game are really cool. And that's on top of the 16 playable layers. I'm not going to go into all of these tools, but I'll talk about some of the more interesting ones. The first new addition to this game that caught my eye is the Powered Up Creator. And it's exactly what it sounds like. With it, you're able to create your own power-ups. And no, it's not just a copy of the Creatinator introduced in LVP2. Instead of having a helmet with an emitter, you have a tool where you can create any weapon of your choice, whether it's a laser gun, Reinhardt's rocket hammer from Overwatch, or banana nunchucks. Just do whatever you want. You have complete control over what it looks like, what objects and materials you use, and what function it has. In the story mode, there are several tools already pre-made by the developers, which were made using the Power Up Creator. You had things such as the Pumpinator, which was just a pump gun that could blow certain objects over. There were boost boots, and with these, you were able to boost jump. If you had a boost refresher object, it would allow you to boost again in midair once you activate it. Another was the blink ball, which allowed you to shoot a ball and teleport once it hit a teleportation material. But you get the point. The power-up creator was made to give people the freedom to make their own power-ups, and the ones shown in story mode were examples to show just how much freedom you had. But on top of that, there was also the poppy creator tool, with this, you were basically able to go into create mode inside of play mode. This was mainly used in the Poppet Puzzles mode. Puzzles using the Poppet power-up in a mode separate from story mode that kind of acted like a hands-on tutorial in some ways. And hey, Larry Da Vinci from Little Big Planet 2 is here. What a neat surprise. Other than those tools, you had a whole bunch of amazing logic. Everything that LBP3 added was great for the most part, and it's a shame that it was ruined for me. The game isn't completely dead, and all of its potential wasn't lost. There are still some outstanding level creators out there on this game today, and I see their creations on Twitter all the time. I just never experienced much of what this game had to offer firsthand. Before I could, I was turned off by how bucky the game was. The story mode was alright. It wasn't amazing, and I definitely liked LBP2's better. I might have liked it more if I didn't have so many problems progressing in the PS4 version, but that's basically all she wrote. Nothing else came from the Little Big Planet series after 3. Yes, there were some DLC packs for LBP3, but nothing crazy enough for me to talk about. Little Big Planet as a game franchise, like I said before, is really, really, really important to me. And I'm really upset that it had to die for me so soon. I talked about the entire main series, and that's that. There isn't much else the series could do, but it would be nice to see an LBP4 sometime in the future. But tell me in the comments what your experiences were like with these three games if you ever played them. I finally covered all three, and I can't wait to make videos on some of those spin-offs of the future. But I'll see you guys pretty soon. Goodbye.